Strawberries are one of our favorite perennial crops. We've grown June-bearing strawberries for years. They produce large, delicious fruit in June, but don't bear fruit for the rest of the year. To enjoy fresh strawberries over longer growing season, we planted TriStar day-neutral strawberries in this garden bed. Unlike older ever-bearing varieties that bear fruit mostly early in the season and in the fall, day-neutral strawberries provide a more continuous harvest from spring through fall and set fruit whenever the temperature is between 35 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They produce smaller fruit than June-bearing varieties, but they bear fruit in the first year, which is a big advantage. TriStar is one of the more popular day-neutral varieties. Hey boy. One of the most economical and effective ways to grow strawberries is with bare roots. We purchased 25 TriStar bare roots like this for $11.99. They're shipped in a bundle tied with a rubber band and should be separated and planted as soon as possible for optimal results. The best time to plant strawberries is in early spring. TriStar strawberries are hardy from zone 4 to zone 8. We chose this location to plant our strawberries because with 7 hours of direct sun it's one of the sunniest spots in our shaded garden. And strawberries do best with about 6 to 10 hours of direct sun. Strawberries grow best in loose, well-drained soil with plenty of organic matter. They also prefer a pH range of 6 to 6.8. So if you have alkaline soil, you might want to consider using elemental sulfur to bring the pH down to the desired range. Before planting, I placed the roots in water for 20 minutes to hydrate them. I then laid the roots out on the bed, spacing them between 12 and 18 inches apart. When planting bare roots, it's important to bury the roots in the soil, but leave the crown above. The crown is the section that is just above my thumb. I planted each bare root in a hole deep enough to accommodate the roots. I kept the bottom of the crown at soil level, lightly tamped down the soil, and maintained a spacing of 12 to 18 inches between plants. After planting, I watered the bed. Strawberries require a moderate amount of moisture. To reduce watering requirements and suppress weeds, I also mulched the bed. The most common mulch for strawberries is, of course, straw. Strawberry beds are typically covered with straw in the fall to protect the plants from the winter cold. Straw is then pulled back slightly away from the plants in the spring to give them room to grow. We didn't have straw, but we had dried ornamental grass, which will serve the same purpose. I was careful to remove the seed heads before applying the dried grass as mulch. Wood chips and leaves are also excellent mulches for strawberries as long as they're not allowed to cover them. Now that I've planted the strawberries, let's talk about how I plan to take care of them going forward. One common piece of advice is to remove the blossoms for all or part of the first year. The idea behind this is that this will focus more of the plant's energy on developing roots and foliage and will lead to larger fruit and larger harvests in the future. Though this is a common practice, even among professional growers, the evidence supporting this practice is anecdotal. And I've personally been very happy with our strawberry harvest, even though I've always ignored this advice. Next, strawberries produce new plants by sending out runners as shown here. June bearing varieties tend to put out a lot of runners and can quickly take over an area. So to keep my June bearing plants under control, I frequently pinch runners. However, the TriStar variety that I'm growing doesn't produce as many runners, so I probably won't prune too many of them in the first year. Instead, I'll let them fill out this bed, and I'll use some runners to start new plants in pots that I'll transplant to other areas of the garden. And in a few years from now, when these plants are older, I'll use runners to replace them, and this will keep the strawberry patch more productive in the long run. Finally, we don't plan to use any store-bought fertilizers to feed our strawberries. Instead, we'll keep the bed mulched. This will provide a slow release of nutrients into the soil. We may also occasionally add compost or vermicompost made from free local resources. I hope you found this look at how we plant and grow strawberries helpful. This year I'm sharing our entire spring planting schedule, so if you'd like to see more of what we're planting this spring, please see this link. Well that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. Mm -hmm.